In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah. Muhammad is his messenger. And I'd like to greet all my brothers and sisters with the greeting words of peace of assalamu alaikum. Um, first, I would like to thank student minister Robert Muhammad for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today about something um, that I think is really relevant that we may not know going in to a new year um, is how we end this year. Considering that this is the last Sunday in 2019, it's, a, it's almost like a tradition. Between November and January 1st, mainly black people, <laughs> we eat more food, drink more alcohol, smoke, do whatever we, all unrighteous stuff between those months. So what I wanted to talk to you today about is something that um, most of us don't really keep in mind is alcohol disease, no, excuse me, liver disease, and where that comes from. More than 80 million Americans have this deadly disease and don't even know it. And what it's called is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which affects an estimate of 80 million people. And we estimate more than 50 million people in the world taken in the adult population is that they suffer from um, globally chronic liver disease caused by non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, alcoholic uh, liver disease, and viral liver disease, which is all of your hepatitises, A, B, C, D, E, and F, however more they find. <laughs> is what it, but with non-fatty non liver disease, non-alcoholic fat, fatty liver disease, is what it is, is it's a buildup of more extra fat in the liver cells that you're not consumed by alcohol. So what is that? In message, excuse me, in How to Eat to Live, book one on page 24, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad writes, God Almighty has taught me and many others that we should never eat more than one meal a day. This will most certainly heal you of many complaints. Since American citizens eat more sugar, starchy foods than they should, there's almost an epidemic of too much sugar acc accumulating in the blood. Eating one meal a day, which does not include too much sugar, will keep you healthy, both physically and mentally. If you are a Muslim believer in Allah and the religion of peace, Islam. So within one week, you can get used to eating once a day, and within one week, you can get used to eating once every other day. Many of the Muslims are eating like this, and you can eat this way too. Our stomachs are just the way they are. We train them to be. So we do this to ourselves. And one of the things I think that I find out, and how do we find out about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, is our body tells us the most amazing story by our blood. When I ordered lab work for a routine physical, I don't know how many other healthcare providers do that, but every year, I want to measure your blood and see what's going on because it tells me the story because you can look healthy. I obtain your labs. It's a whole nother story going on inside. And what happens, there's two specific enzymes that the liver produces that are very specific to just the liver. It's your ALT and your AST. Those are liver enzymes. When they're elevated, there's three reasons why they're elevated. Drugs, alcohol, or infection. So I have to figure out if you're taking on drugs, chemicals, Tylenol is one of the biggest culprits. If you're taking, drink, doing drugs, if you're drinking too much alcohol, and what you're actually eating, or if you have hepatitis. So once those levels are elevated, then there, we have to do more and figure out what the story is. So the liver is a part, we know, is a part of the digestive system. It is the largest organ in the body. It's responsible for 500 tasks in the body. The liver is the only organ, it's so unique in that it can regenerate. Not most organs can do that. They scar, but what happens is called a hepatocyte. It will regenerate itself over and over again, but once you continue to abuse it, what happens is it's called something that's remodeling. When you look under the microscope and you can see that it's not the original hepatocyte that you had that you have caused so much damage that now your liver can't even maintain you. 
So what are the things um, it does? It produces bile and excretion. It metabolizes fats, proteins, carbohydrates. It also um, helps with excretion of cholesterol, fat. It's an enzyme. It activates other enzymes. It stores glucagon or sugar, vitamins, and minerals. It synthesizes very important in clotting factor in blood. And it detoxifies and removes out the toxins and it purifies your body. Those are just a few. Some people don't realize that your liver, if you lose your liver, you will bleed out because <laughs> it's responsible for clotting factors. So you can only live about two to three days past your liver once you come in full liver failure. It's just like a chain ball reaction. About two days, three days, if you don't give a liver transplant, it is nothing. They can't bypass it. They can't do nothing. You are gone. Um, so what are the foods, just going back to how to eat to live, that they tell us to avoid so that we can have a healthy liver? Six foods that we should definitely avoid. Alcohol is a major cause of fatty liver disease, as well as other diseases, liver diseases. Sugar starchy foods, candies, cookies, sodas, fruit juices, fried foods, salt, white bread, rice, pasta, and red meat. Does that sound like some of the diets that we eat? <laughs> Just take an evaluation. Going back to, you know, a lot of people look at sugar and starchy foods as it's going to cause me to have diabetes, but it will absolutely cause your liver to fail on you. And one of the things when you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, it, it, you can't do anything other to treat it other than to change your diet. It's nothing else you can do other than to say you need to eliminate these foods and exercise. So a lot of our problems and what happens to us is because we choose to eat other than what we were instructed by a man who was taught by a God on how we should eat. That's just so, un that's so relevant to what we hear in the research with doctors and all of this. God is instructing us how to that's eat, and right. we're just rebellion, and that's why we're sick. That's why it's 80 million Americans, and some of us don't even know because we don't go to a, care, a primary care doctor or a physician just to be evaluated, just to make sure that your insides are okay. Obesity. When you have so much fat in your tissue, cells all around, it gets stored in your liver. So just being obese is a risk factor in developing fatty, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. There's no such thing as I'm just a healthy. We're not healthy, we're not thick. There's no such thing as a thick, because I'm black, we're thick. That is, that is just a, that is false, <laughs> it's a lie. We need to accept the fact that we eat too much and we can't make excuses for that because it's going to eventually affect our health. So remember, a few while, while ago, I was talking about the essential nutrient of water. Water cleanses the systems of toxins. And as you know, the liver is responsible for flushing toxins. Water aids the liver with this process. If you want to improve your health of your liver, you need to drink more water. Oftentimes, when people come in front of me and they're like, I have this. I have that, I have a headache, I have all of this. My first question is, how much water do you drink? <laughs> what is going on? Because if you're constantly putting toxins in your body and you're not flushing them out, what happens to it? It just sits there and, it's, and it wears down on your liver. So one of the things that I always think about spiritually and physically, because where the body goes, so does the mind. So if you are living a toxic life, <laughs> you know, the liver is the largest organ, the organ in the body, but what is the main thing that we always have to work on with ourselves? Our character, our morality, and our way of life. If it's toxic, it's going to kill you because you won't be able to function if you can't think right, if you can't eat right, if you can't act right, and you can't live right. You can't be purified. <laughs> so the same way in our physical body, we have to remove all of these other toxins. We are surrounded by toxic music, toxic people, of course, toxic foods. 
And the main toxic thing that we or most of us are suffering with is the devil of self. That deceptive intelligence of ourselves. We don't need anyone because we're doing it right to ourselves. Perfect example. I started off with talking about, you know, during this time, if you work in the office, I worked in the hospital and all of this. They send chocolates that I have never even heard from. Like the doctors, they'll send chocolates, chocolate-covered pretzels, chocolate-covered strawberries, popcorn, cheeses. They send it all over there, and you're sitting there like, wow, I'm not going to eat this. But in my mind, I'm like, well, that is a strawberry. Deceptive intelligence of me. Under the chocolate, there's a strawberry, there's an apple, there's a banana. That's fruit. <laughs> and it's dark chocolate. So that has anti axons that help provide cancer. So I think I'm okay with eating a chocolate covered strawberry. <laughs> Not just one, maybe a couple or two. So, but that's deceiving my own mind because that's something that I enjoy, you know, my relationship with chocolate. <laughs> it's not good for me, but that's how we do. I'm just making light of how we use deceptive intelligence to keep toxins inside of our bodies, toxic thoughts, toxic way we live. You know, the theme is not that I want to, you know, there's no, to me, there's no New Year's resolution with me. Reflection is what I need to do. What did I do this year to help redeem myself and help redeem my people? And if that is not adding up to the assignment that I took on, well, there's some room to remove some toxins. I need to drink some water, spiritual water. And what that is, to remove all of these toxic things out of my body, and that's none other than the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's That's what we do, praise be to Allah. And if you don't know what that is, like I said last week, keep coming back. You will quickly be acquainted with what that is. (laughs) So that's what we have to do to remove the toxins of ourselves. That devil within self is the hardest one to remove because it sits with you, it drives with you, it sleeps with you, it does everything. It never goes away. No matter how strong or how desirous you are to live a righteous life, it's right there with us. So that's what we have to work on instead of pointing a finger at someone else and what they're not doing and what this person's not doing, what this organization's not doing, what our government's not doing. What are you doing to make your life, your situation, and myself better Good question. so that I can remove all these toxins and I won't die of being a toxic person? What's the dash between your life? You know, not what someone else is going to do for me, what am I going to do for myself? Mm. And once you do that, since we're, this is friends and family's day, we're family whether we like it or not That's because right. we are direct descendants from God. Please. That's what makes That's us family, right. all That's praises right. due to a lot. That's right. So what are some of the things that we can do? We know what we can do to eat better. Just avoid all those foods that we talk about. And if you haven't heard or before you leave, I suggest as a New Year's present to yourself, go downstairs and buy How to Eat to Live, book one and two, and you will learn a lot more about what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But there's other things that we can work on, and that's our attitude. So our attitude about how we live has to be changed. You know, we get into a system of things. Oh, my alarm goes up. I got to go to work. I got to do this. But if you have the right attitude, which shapes your character about your purpose on life, and that's to duplicate yourself in righteousness, that's our purpose is to just make another person of me. That's how we started with two cells that join on the one and duplicate it, duplicate it, and you get you, and you get you. That's how it is in the same way when we're in a work to resurrect people's mind and turn them on to righteousness. That's all we're doing. We're not doing anything um, that's so hard, uh, and especially when we just live the right way in front of people. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in his book, Closing the Gap, said, so prayer, that constant remembrance of God keeps you in the right out attitude and therefore there's no limit to your altitude meaning your height 
One of the things that I used to love, and I can see the uh, difference now being in the nation of Islam, when I was younger, I was in the church. But every New Year's Eve, what we did, we went to church. And when New Year's came in, we were on our knees in prayer. Not a bottle, not a blower, whatever those things are doing. We were praying, and this is a young child. You know, we would look forward to that every single year. So I can see the safety component of it, of why, because you can get in your car after celebrating something and someone who's doing something else that's toxic to them can take you out with their car, because trust and believe, I guarantee you're going to wake up, inshallah, if we are still present, because that's not even guaranteed either, that you're going to hear on the news January 1st of how many people died New Year's Eve. Did we not, I know that there was a story on the news on Christmas, how the man walked out in Philadelphia and killed a woman because he was what they were drinking. On Christ's birthday, supposedly, celebrating that, drinking, and then walked out and killed his wife, mother of five children, that are now going to be totally traumatized because of what they decided to do. You're going to hear it. When I worked in the emergency room, we would kind of Gamble, how many are we going to get tonight? <laughs> how many are we going to get? The worst time to work in an emergency room is the day after Thanksgiving, the day after Christmas, and January 1st. It was some of the worst shifts I've ever been in my whole entire life because of what we decide to do those evenings before and causes detrimental harm to our life. Mm -hmm. So we're in our homes. We pray in our homes. Prayer sets our attitude. So one of the prayers that I will share with you that I think is relevant to what we're going on in the country is it says, oh Allah, I seek thy refuge from what? Anxiety and grief. Do we not see a lot of anxiety and grief in this country right now? And I seek thy refuge from what? The lack of strength, laziness, and I seek thy refuge from cowardness and negardliness. And I seek thy refuge from being overpowered by debt and the oppression of men. O oh Allah, suffice thou with me what is lawful and keep away from me what is prohibited. With thy grace make me free of want of what is besides thee. See, you can say this prayer all day long, That's driving right. and reciting because Every day, somebody's trying to get in that way, and particularly the Satan of self, the devil of self, in our sojourn of being righteous. Who wants to be in a state of anxiety all day, every single day? That's the way 85% of the black man and woman live today, in That's a right. state of anxiety because of the pressure of this world. That's why the only solution is to do what? Separate. That's right. <laughs> so we can physically separate our minds from all of these toxic behaviors, toxic way of life, toxic way the way we think of each other. You know, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm just striving to be better than I was the day before. All praise is due to a lot. And when we do that, we develop. That's right. we, re we elevate ourselves just by trying to be a better person in general. Once you start doing that, then you will attract people to you that are wondering how you're doing this mm -hmm. because I seek refuge in Allah <laughs> That's right. all the time because this world, our people, the negativity in my own head will get to you in a matter of time if you have the negative, if you don't have the right attitude. So that's what, you know, I wanted to talk to us about with liver disease. So remember... Eat better, think better, be better. If we can do all of those things, then we will absolutely do what? Live better. Right. <laughs> and it's, that's, it's just a simple recipe. It's a very restricted type of recipe, but that's okay. Because at the end, all we want to do is be pleasing to God. Right. And in being pleasing to God, then that means we got to require us some work to do on ourselves and be an example and go after people and say, this is how I, this is what we do. 
you might see me standing up here today, but this isn't the way I always was. I didn't fall out of heaven. I came straight from hell of my own oh, self. All yeah, praises yeah. due to a lot. That's right. So at this time, move quickly. I'm going into um, current events. Um, and I think the centerfold of this week's article in the final call, you know, if you don't have this before you go, this paper is for us. So get it every single week because the information in here will absolutely save your life and you will get the real news of what's going on around the world, not, you know, fake news <laughs> of what we see, <laughs> but this is the real news. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's article that was written July 16th, 2000, it says, and it kind of just ties into right what I was saying, the challenge to change. Who is your leader, God or Satan? Mm. The challenge is here today, we have to change. Satan is the master of America. Satan is the master of the world. Is Satan your master? The God within wants to be sure that we are not liars, that we are truthful in our confession. The Bible says that the sons of God came to present themselves before God and the devil came along with them. The sons of God were hanging out with the devil. What kind of company are you keeping as a son of God? What do, you, what do the people you hang out with do? What kind of thoughts do they think? What kind of words do they speak? What kind of actions do they involve themselves in? Yet you say that you, they are your friends. That's something so relevant, you know, when you're around, my grandmother used to say, you know, birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> So, you know, when I would try and use deceptive intelligence with my grandmother, no, you know, they're not that bad, you know, but you taught me better. So I'm going to influence them. And she would just look at me and say, you're lying to yourself. They're going to influence you in a matter of time. And she was so right and exact, you know. The people that we hang around with should be of like minds. That doesn't mean that you can't embrace your family who's not like you. You can't embrace other people or coworkers not like you, but you don't have to take on their ways and actions. You can stand right next to them and be a righteous person. Be someone who they can look up to, not someone who you're constantly feeling like you got to go down to their level just to be included. That's the problem. We want to be included in everything. You can't be included in what everyone in, that's around us in this world, because this is Satan's world. You got to separate yourself. So when you have to be comfortable and strong enough to say, that's okay. I'm not going to do that today. I have somewhere else to go. Or come with me. <laughs> come with me to the mosque. Come with me to the study group. Come with me. Just as easy as they'll invite you, invite them <laughs> and see if they're going to hang out with you. But they're very comfortable with us hanging out with them. That's right. Praise be to Allah. So God asks, whence come from Satan? Satan, and he comes from walking up and down to and fro the earth, seeking who he may devour. He is making everything a part of himself. Satan was eating up the world, and God could only point to one man. God, have you considered my servant Job? You know, Job, God put everything on him, but he was faithful That's because right. he believed that God was going to pull him through and save him, and he did, and he lost a lot. We're going to lose some friends. We're going to lose some family members. We're going to get people saying that we're weird, we're awkward, something's not wrong, That's something's right. not right with us, or what's wrong with us, excuse me, what's wrong with us? Mm -hmm. That's okay because when you are in the work of redeeming a people which is bigger and better than us, you know, the mission is so much bigger than us. This is what we talked about in our study group on Friday. The world, we are an example. So we're going to get hurt. <laughs> we're going to get some bruises. People are going to reject us, but in the Bible it says, he looked beyond my faults mm -hmm. and saw my needs. That's what we have to do. We need to see the needs of the people look beyond what they look like because somewhere in their midst, they are, there lays God. And that's what we have to talk to. 
So he says, there is no sense in us talking about the white man and how wicked the government is. And this was written in 2000. We're 20 years past this article. The real enemy we have to challenge is the Satan of self. The hardest fight you will ever have is when you go to war with yourself to accept the challenge to change. You will change and our change will force change in the world, but somebody has to stand up and accept that challenge. As it became clear to me on my deathbed that I believe now my belief must be translated into action that good works will glorify my Father in heaven. May God inspire us. May God stimulate us and motivate us. May God allow us to be the recipient of his, of his spirit through receiving of his word. When you are striving to be right, you must be in the company of those who are striving with you so that when you get weak, you can draw strength from your sister or your brother who is stronger. That's right. And together the church will be strong, the community will be strong. With the strength, with the strong of our nation will be, excuse me, we will be strong and our nation will be strong. Come on and let's accept the challenge to change. So oftentimes we have this uh, ex expression of, I can't change. This is just who I am. Well, do you know that you get a new set of skin? <laughs> Every six years you have a new set of skin. You can't even see it. You just think it's your skin. When you're peeling, you know, now that they've destroyed the ozone layer, you see it if you get burnt by the sun, your skin changes because it's our protection. It's the first line of protection is your skin, right? So the first line of protection for us is to live the life that God ordained us to live. And in that, guess what we're going to have to do? Change. Change our ways. Change our thoughts. The reason that you don't change is because you don't want to. <laughs> That's just as simple as that. But if you stay around long enough with these teachings, I guarantee you'll change. So at this time, you know, we've had our healthy uh, salad and I guess some bean on, soup. Now. now it's time for us to have our main meal, what we came here on our friends and family day, um, to hear a great word that you will never hear what you have heard today anywhere else other than Muhammad's mosque. That's it, hands down. So open up your ears, take care of everything you need to do and be attentive to hear our, our, stu our representative in the state of Delaware who's going to give us that meal, and then we're going to have another meal. <laughs> All praises due to Allah. With his subject for today, the duty of the civilized man. Matt, br bring your hands together for Minister Robert Muhammad. <laughs> 